Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, it's Monday 6 a.m. You know what time it is for? That's right. It's time for Take Out. Take Out is me, Kev the Rev, and Pastor Angie. Week 6 of the Take Out. You're already deep into February. That's Hope right. you are a second year of the month that started out well. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you what it is like here in the studio. We are so ready for this week's Take Out. Take Out. Take Out. Take Out. <laughs> I'm really excited for this Yes, week. we are in the second part of Matthew 23. That's right. And we're talking about the power of choice the this week. The power of choice. Come week. on, take us into it. So what, how we ended last week is Jesus has is talking to the Pharisees and the scribes and he's telling them, what to you? Oh. Because you guys have chosen not to, to accept my word in mm. your life, not to live out the word. Yep. And so he, he begins by cursing them and telling them, what to you? He speaks to them roughly. Maybe yeah. this is not the sweet Jesus. I maybe know. Jesus. This is also the sweet You're Jesus. You're like, how? In fact, you need to take this in for a moment and acknowledge that this is the God, the God of love, Come abundant on. love. Mm. He's sending, the God who's going to die for us is saying, what to you? Come on. Come on. Like, pause and say, uh, this doesn't match. Eh? <laughs> What to you who has abandoned me, who's not willing to do the thing that I'm willing for you to do? Yeah. In fact, I love, um, I think there's, there's a part that you had mentioned to me. In, in, yeah, in, 23, in 23. Verse 23. Can you read it for us? Yeah, so it says, what to you teachers, uh, you, what to you Pharisees, let me see that. Uh, what to you Pharisees, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, mm. you give a tenth of your spices and mints and dill and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Jesus is not neglecting the tithe over here. Please tithe. It's already fair. Jesus is actually saying, you see when you tithe, you know, you are, the blessing is on you. You are mm. choosing you. Mm. God blesses you. God, you know, de- rebukes the devourer on your behalf. But he's saying there are more weighty matters of the Lord, justice, faithfulness, and yeah. mercy. Yeah. Because those have to deal with other people. Yeah. You're not, you're making a choice that blesses you, but you're not making a choice that blesses Others. other people. Yeah. And that's why he said you should have done the former without neglecting the latter. In other words, do both. Yes, still honor God, but that blesses you. You still not be able to say, how do I bless other people? That's the weighty matters of the Lord having to do with uh, the choice to bless yeah. people, the, the choice to pursue justice, exactly. the choice to pursue mercy, the choice to pursue our uh, faithfulness in that sense. You make the choice uh, and honor God all through. And that's why even at the beginning of the chapters, how we ended last week, he says, that's why he's calling them hypocrites. Come on. He says, you guys are more concerned about looking clean outwardly, oh. but inwardly you're not clean. Yep. Even if you look back at the Sermon on the Mount, the whole point of the Sermon that he was saying was, it's, it's I want your heart. Come on. I want your heart to be in it. When he says, don't murder, mm. now he's saying, it's not just don't murder. It's don't it, your if brother. you're angry at mm. your brother, he says, it, it's, it's about the heart, the weightier mm. matter. He says, I'm, I'm more concerned about what's happening with you. Mm. And so he wants your heart. He says, are you willing? And so at the end of that uh, uh, ch- uh, chapter 23, verse uh, 37 to 39. I'm going to ask Pastor Kev to read it for us because it makes me so sad every time I read it. Yeah, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone the, uh, those sent to you, how often I've longed to gather you your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you are unwilling. Look, your house is left to you desolate for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He's telling them prophetically, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he's talking to, and he's just cast the, he cast the fig tree earlier. Yeah. And so he's telling them what happened to that fig tree is happening to you. And you know, the fig tree is the emblem of you know, Israel. That's right. Yeah. And so he says, the way I've cast that victory, now I'm leaving you. You're going to dry up. Mm. He said, I sent prophets ahead and you rejected them. And then even the, the son of God has come himself and you have rejected him. Yeah. He says, but I was willing to gather you, mm. but you're not willing. Wow. The power of choice. Yeah. And so Jesus has come to the Pharisees and they weren't willing to come to him. And then he continues that kind of end time prophecy. Yeah. yeah? Now when he gets to Matthew 24, he's You're deep like, in hey, it. He's, deep, he's gone deep in it. <laughs> <laughs> now, we need to remember the perspective of the disciples who are with Jesus at yeah. this time. So the, the disciples are throughout their lives from childhood. They've crammed the first five books of the Bible as children because Come that's on. what you do. Yeah. And so they know the, the word. They know the prophecies about the Messiah. Yeah. And so they are leaving the temple because that's where they were at. And they're looking at the building. It had gold on top. The stones are huge. Yeah. They're like, look at this piece of art. And then Jesus turns and says, you will see this, everything you see, not one stone will be left. Come on. Leaving no stone and done. Leaving no stone and <laughs> And you know what? Actually-
actually happened is the Romans came to to attack the temple and yeah. they got so greedy because they wanted the gold and stuff. One Roman threw uh, they threw their fire stick on top, I think, and it 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 made the gold even at the top melt. Wow! And so the the gold melted that mm. was at the top of the temple melted into the stone. Ooh. And so the the Romans because they were they wanted the they gold. They really wanted the gold. They removed every stone. What? These to guys were the, the first gold, gold diggers. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you can check out. This was his check out. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe this guy. Anyway, so the first gold diggers. But it's, it's that word. Wow. No stone will be left unturned. Wow. And so there's no proof that even the temple was there because they left no stone that turned to get to the gold. Wow. And then he talks prophetically to these Jews who are who are him then they're expecting a, a messiah who's gonna rule and reign. conquering savior because their whole lives is what mm. we've been hearing you were just sharing with me we were hearing two things yeah you know from from their perspective they, they are getting these prophecies about the messiah and it's coming in two forms mm. number one they're hearing you know he's gonna be born a baby in bethlehem mm. um and then he's gonna be suffering at some point you know uh by iniquity his iniquities was laid on his mm. back through his stripes that's right uh, they're reading you know uh he loved nothing that will attract him mm. as to him so they're wondering what kind of a you know a servant is that and then i mean a savior uh, a, you know exactly. messiah is exactly. this but then on the other side they're also reading how he's gonna come conquering mm. he's gonna come and basically rule in the seat of his his father David is going to come as a conquering savior. And so from their perspective, they're wondering, are they two messiahs? How is this going to work? How is this going to work? How will it be? Because, you know, how come his one is suffering and then the other one is saving? Now, from our perspective, it hits us, oh yes, mm. he's going to come as a babe of Bethlehem. He's going to die. He's going to go. And then he's going to back, come back again as the conquering uh, savior. He's and so he's helping them understand that in a sense. So now for them, when he speaks this, they, they come to Jesus uh, after that conversation, obviously, they come and ask him a question. They say, okay, Father, uh, Jesus, tell us, these things you're telling us about, how will they be in mm. how will it happen? Is there a sign that we know mm. when it will happen? True. In fact, tell us, tell us when, uh, what, when, when is the time that it happens? So then they're expecting Jesus to say, no, next week, I'm going to conquer. Week, so I'm gonna they come dressed the same way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, no, come dressed in black because we're going to conquer. Hey, we're going to have some, some worry. Then that's what they're expecting. Yeah. They're like, we've had times of, you know, prayer. We've been to prayer meetings and mm. maybe that was the day. You know, we understand. I know. Yeah. But they're like, but now we want to conquer. Then Jesus does this whole prophetic thing where he speaks into the future. <laughs> When he's going to come and conquer again. Mm. And so he talks about, he says, you know, there's going to be uh, the, uh, the abomination of the desolation. Yeah. He talks about prophetically what he's going to do, what Daniel had said. Yeah. He spoke about the, the coming of man to take uh, us into glory. Mm. He, he talks, he says, remember the fig tree and what I talked about, how prophetically it will die. Then he says, nobody knows the hour oh, or on. the day mm. that this will happen. And so then they're like, Tweet, tweet, blink, blink. How? What do you mean? Is is it not next week? Like this, such know. a time as this when the Passover is happening, yeah. when everybody will be here, it must be that time. He's like, no, it isn't that time. Then he goes into parables as is in the style of yep. Jesus. Yep. He says, I've told you this truth. Let me give a parable to illustrate, to explain. to explain this. And so he talks about the parable of the ten virgins. And he mm. says, those who are wise are those who keep uh, some extra oil. Yeah. Yeah. waiting for the bread. You don't know the time or the hour. You don't hour. know the time or the hour, but he says, be faithful and wait. Come he on. talks about the parable of the t- talents and he says, I give to different people different talents, but he says, it's about you being faithful. Yeah. Don't just hide it and wait. In fact, he says, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Other versions like this will do business yes. until I come. So he's like, do business. Yeah. Yeah, continue to do business. In fact, thrive in the business. Come on. Be faithful. Says continue to evangelize because I've given you a task uh, of evangelism. Continue to ev- evangelize. That's so amazing because they, as we wait for Jesus, there are those who keep the oil. They keep their faith. They mm. keep their you know their their oil. You know, speaking of the you know work of the spirit in someone's life. But then there are those who and and they stay there. And then there are those who don't occupy mm. until he comes. They don't do business yes. until he comes. And he's inviting us to do both. He's inviting us to do both. He says, I want you to thrive where I have left you. Mm. I want you to still continue with evangelism because I've given you a task. He says, be faithful with the little. Yeah. Be faithful in this task that I'm calling you to. But even as you wait for the coming of the end when they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth, but he says, wait for that. You know, he's going to come at that time. Now, at, after that, we start seeing us moving into the last uh, few weeks yeah. of Jesus. Mm. Uh, and uh, like I said, the, the theme of, of this week uh, really is about the, the willingness, your heart to be willing to follow. Power's and so, choice. 
the power of choice and these mm. guys as the, the the Pharisees and the Sadducees start plotting about how they're gonna as uh, Sadducees yes they start plotting about how they're gonna kill Jesus and defeat him and so they have uh, there's a, there's a power of choice in a, at this time oh yeah he even gives us the how I miss something mm. so he says be faithful uh, he says uh, be ready at all times yeah. then he tells us how he says. In this, how you're gonna do this is you're gonna uh, take care of the sick. Yeah. You're gonna feed those who are hungry. Visit the prison. You're gonna visit prisoners. guys in prison. He Clothed says this is the, yeah. The, 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 yeah, the ones who are naked, those who don't have clothes. He says when you're doing it to them, you're doing it as if to me. Come on. And so he then says, for you who do that, come into my kingdom, mm. the place that I have prepared for you. When I read that, you should see me always stand up. I'm like, mm, Father, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> take yourself out. <laughs> yeah, take yourself out. was like, pick me up, Scotty. Anyway, so <laughs> he's like, I'm ready to take you home. It really excites yeah. me. But then he also, later on, he says to those who have not done this, those who, he's like, you pretended that you did mm. this. He says, depart from me. You, you work as of iniquity. Yeah. Yes. Into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels uh, it gives me a hint he says god never planned hell for us for humans in fact so hell was meant for the devil and his angels also you know uh you know mm. diffuse the relationship of god and stuff and so jesus literally says if gonna end if any human is gonna end up in hell it's over my dead body <laughs> and so he died on the cross mm. of calvary who is, who is this man who is how this, this is your pal q anyway so this guy <laughs> But true story, it's true, my I just can't believe that you said that. But he did say that. And he was basically saying, it's your choice Mm. that leads you there. Mm. And so he says, the power of choice leads you to, there are two uh, places open for you. The choice has the opportunity to lead you to heaven. But certain choices you make, how you live your life, will lead you to hell, which is not meant for you. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's so fresh. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So now we're going to the last, uh, the last week of Jesus, so to speak. Yeah. Um, By the time we get to Sunday. By the time we get somewhere in the last week of Jesus. So Jesus is um, uh, with his disciples. He's telling them, you know, I'm about to die soon. And then what happens, you know, after giving that powerful prophetic word, he's like, I'm about to die soon. So they go for a feast. Mm. They are at at the leper, same on the leper's house, most likely the guy who was uh, healed at the beginning of the reading. And then this lady comes into the house with oil, uh, with a jar of oil. And we always think like she just burst in or sleep, sneaked into the bash mm. then she just like pouring oil and she's like how awkward oh, weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she sneaks yeah. in and pours it and she starts wiping his legs with her hair Come on. I'm like oh, awkward moment <laughs> but then uh, she chooses she makes a choice to give her wages she makes mm. her choice to give everything she has to anoint the man of God or to anoint the servant and she doesn't I don't know if she knows that prophetically she's preparing him for death yeah she doesn't know she actually doesn't know. she doesn't know that she's she just preparing. made a choice yeah to honor him and to to love on him yeah and we're in the middle of uh, doing um fast fruits at Nodino, yes. and it's very easy to get caught up in being critical and you know I you know I don't know getting caught up in that but this woman instead chooses to honor him true on the flip side Judas is our good friend like, Judas. What a waste! What a waste! What no, a no, 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 you guy. This guy has just listened to Jesus say, "Feed the hungry." Ah, he's the applying poor. the sermon. He wrong wrong been, yeah, <laughs> he chooses the wrong moment to be critical yeah. because then he's critical over the wrong thing. Because wow. he says, he says, um, he, Jesus points out to him and says, this woman is doing something. She's preparing me for my season. Mm. And I feel like it's very easy for us to get critical in wrong moments because I feel like all of us as humans are are critical beings. But what I feel is, you know, even linked to that spiritual blindness and even the power of choice to say, God, I'm not going to be critical and then be hypocritical mm. because to God this man is a hypocrite mm. he's like you're there plotting because in the next verse he says he meets the dudes yeah. to plot how to, yeah. to how hand to him over Jesus, he's yeah. like don't be hypocritical True. so in your choice choose to serve the king mm. choose to honor him mm. uh, don't be critical at the wrong time and invite God's wisdom into your season and say wow. God I don't want to be critical over the wrong things i want to be able to serve you with everything that i have true and so fast food let's say for this example this story of fast foods i don't want to be critical that i miss out on on giving to you yeah and also don't be critical of other people's generosity Mm. because sometimes we become critical of other people's generosity uh, and we miss out on being generous ourselves that's right you know uh, Mm. and so it's sort of god is saying let them do what i have put in their hearts Mm. to do Mm. um yeah yeah that's right 
and I love I love that lesson. So the power of choice. And then after that, the disciples go and have the last supper. Mm. Uh, we all know that they're having the last supper. It's again, he tells them, go to the city, find a room. Immediately they obey. Yeah. So just seeing growth in the love relationship. Yeah. And then they go and then he, they're having dinner. So how they used to have dinner was on the floor. They never, it wasn't uh, at a table. So guys would recline. Everyone was almost leaning on everybody. It was the style mm. that they ate. I know. Eh? Uh, and so they're sitting there, chilling and eating. And then Jesus starts telling them, guys, you know, you, you guys are all going to deny me in this mm. season. Of course, the disciples are like, oh, never. Yeah. You cannot. Oh, me. In fact, Peter is like, if, if they do, yeah. minister. I can't. <laughs> never. He keeps repeating. Yeah. And he looks at him and says, brother, you're going you're gonna to betray me three times. And I love it because what I, what I see is God knows, yes, mm. that our flesh is, is weak, that he understands that we will have battles where the power of choice can be difficult. Mm. But I love that he's... It, Jesus is still pushing us to a place of the power of choice. True. He says, make a choice to follow me. Mm. Make a choice to be in my space and be in my around me. Because after that, he goes off to pray and he invites the three. Yeah. He invites the famous three. This is uh, Peter, Peter, John, and John, John and James. This is not the first time that the three have been aside, yeah. pulled aside to pray with Jesus. Uh, because it's earlier on um, when Jairus was raised from the dead, to go into the room where the three. Yeah. When they go into the room and they're like, oh, she's dead. This is the first time that they see triumph over death. Yes. Because he then says, wake up, she's just asleep. Mm. They see it. Yeah. The second time that we see them in a space where it's about death is at the transfiguration. Transfiguration, true. And uh, so these guys come and encourage Jesus when he's about to go through, you know, because they're talking to him about the yeah. times. They don't get it. Yeah. But they've been in a space where they've seen victory. They've seen encouragement. Wow. And now they're with him in his most desperate time. Yeah. And so he tells his boys, you guys, I'm, I'm tormented to the point of death. What? Hey, I'm like, a brother has opened up. <laughs> yeah. And then the brothers are like, oh, okay. <laughs> then they fall asleep. You. <laughs> and they fall asleep. You know why they, when, you know why they slept? Mm. We, we have, when you have two, like, you know, Peter, John, and James, that's PJJ. So, uh, so when you have two J's, that's J's, yeah? So they were PJs. They were in their PJs. So it's, I don't know pajamas. This, I don't know. This is your pastor, guys. Also, so what I'm slept. saying, especially you don't want guys. <laughs> I can't believe it. Really? I love the thought of that. They were in their PJs. So I anyway, they in their PJs. They slept. So it says their eyes were heavy. Anyway, so these guys slept. I, unfortunately, I'm always like, I really feel these guys. Even I mean, I think yeah. I would have slept. Uh, yeah. But I love that he wakes them up and says, you know, be with me in this moment. Mm. And he still invites them into their Come space, on. knowing that they might still fall asleep. Yeah. And so I feel like God still invites us into this space, knowing, yeah, we have weaknesses, we have struggles, but he's like, choose to still be in my presence. Wow. The power of choice. Come choose on. to still engage with where the church is going. Choose to still engage in the word. Mm. I choose to still follow him. That's the power of choice. Wow. I love it. Pastor Angie, that's a, um, an amazing word from the beginning from to the end. We're just seeing people making choices. We're pe- seeing people being invited mm. to make different choices. Mm. We're seeing people who are critical of other people's choices and, you know, Jesus' defense uh, over that. And so, uh, as we go into this week, as we go into this month, you know what? I want to invite you with some of those choices. Uh, the choice to pray with us for 30 a.m. every mm. morning. The choice to give your fast food, the choice to be faithful in your tithes, uh, the choice to be part of a discipleship group That's to right. belong, yeah. the choice to keep on reading God's word every morning or every evening, whichever your choice is, and to lean in and to say, I'm going to make this choice that pulls me closer to Jesus yeah. and not away. And so I love this. I love this. I love this. Powerful week. I, I pray this week is as exciting for you. I pray so many breakthroughs for you. True. Even as you go into this week. I can't wait to see you next week. The takeout with the Rev, Rev and, and Pastor, Pastor Angie. Blessings. See you next Monday.